So how did women try to get the vote? Let's start with the suffragists and the suffragettes. There were two organisations, the suffragists and the suffragettes. Watch the following clip, then pause the tape and make notes of the methods used by the suffragists and the suffragettes. The campaign for equal rights began long before Elizabeth Dean was born. During the 1860s, a few visionary women and men began to question women's limited opportunities and their complete legal dependence on men. By the turn of the century, some significant gains had been won. Women could keep their own property when they married, and a few girls' schools and colleges had been set up. Women ratepayers could even vote in local elections and become county councillors. But in the eyes of Millicent Fawcett, women could never achieve full equality until they had the parliamentary vote. Mrs Fawcett and her suffragists led a sustained campaign. In 1903, a new group arrived on the scene, the suffragettes. Impatient with the genteel tactics of Mrs. Fawcett's suffragists, they called for militant action. Led by the charismatic Emmeline Pankhurst, the suffragettes devised colourful protests demanding votes for women, deliberately breaking the law in order to gain maximum publicity. Victoria Lydiard joined them in 1910. At that particular time, Mrs. Pankhurst made a very big effort to have something very big done. And so it was a case of smashing of windows. You should have spotted that the suffragists used peaceful and legal methods and the suffragettes used violent methods. The National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, the suffragists, was set up in 1897. The leader was Millicent Fawcett. They held marches and organised petitions to try to get women the vote. Many MPs supported them, but the government wouldn't allow any time in Parliament to get an act passed. The Women's Social and Political Union, the suffragettes, was set up by Emmeline Pankhurst in 1903. They began to use violent methods in 1905 because peaceful methods weren't working. Their methods gradually became more and more violent until Emily Davison threw herself under the King's horse at the Derby in 1913. This is the end of the section on the suffragists and the suffragettes. Now let's look at the effects of suffragette actions. 